So having said all we need to about that, I suspect, Scott, shall we move on? Yes. To whatever the next film was that I have um, forgotten. Yes. Oh, oh, that wasn't even a segue, but sort of works as one. <laughs> a film about remembering things and not wanting to, or also wanting to. Reminiscence. <laughs> yes, uh, in which uh, Hugh Jackman's Nick Bannister and his buddy Thandiwe Newton's Emily Watts Sanders make their living in the near future in a partially submerged Miami, running a business that plugs folks into a computer to relive and record their memories, whether that's just for nostalgia's sake or for, say, trying to remember where your keys are, such as the request of Rebecca Ferguson's femme fatale May, whom Nick soon falls in love with. A few months in, the relationship seems to be going well until the point that May simply vanishes, causing Nick some heartbreak before he resolves to find out what happened to her. Pulling on this thread reveals, as you would perhaps expect from this sort of thing, that May is not quite who she seems to be, and in discovering her past, Nick will find himself dragged down to the seedy underworld of drug dealers, corrupt hyper-capitalism-backed land barns and their politicking while exploring the strange new canals that used to be Miami streets. I suppose the most revealing thing I can say about Reminiscence is that when I started watching it, there was a substantial pile of messily dumped laundry on the bed next to me, and 90 minutes later there was a stack of neatly folded laundry. (laughs) So to say that it kept my full attention would be a bit of a porky. Um, Indeed, on a quick look around the interwebs, Reminiscence has been rather poorly received. That feels a little harsh to me, but ultimately it's not a film I can go to bat for too strongly, even though it's got a lot of stuff in here that I'm normally open to liking. I mean, I'm a sucker for noirish films, and Hugh Jackman is is dependably likeable self. Uh, the post-climate change world is a cool setting <laughs> and there's some interesting world building going on um, while I perhaps didn't get much in the way of chemistry between Jackman and Rebecca Ferguson I did at least believe that Jackman's character felt that there was uh, so there's more than enough there to theoretically engage my interest through the various strands of the underworld and Nick Bannister's obsession and I suppose it's ultimately trying to be about the redemptive power of love and the destructive power of obsession and quite where the line between them is which I could just about argue that it managed to do, but at the same time it's also trying to be a film about about climate change and about inequality and about government and about capitalism and about humanity's perseverance in the face of adversity and about a half dozen other things that I'm forgetting and there's just too much competing for the sunlight here. It's perhaps not all that surprising that the writer-director, Lisa Joy, has most recently been making the Westworld series, as there's a solid argument that this would have been more suited to a miniseries itself, you know, so it could spend more time building a believable relationship between the leads and fleshing out the role of the land barons in this new world through means other than voiceover. Uh, Flashing back to the resource wars are again mentioned in voiceover, and well, what I'm saying is that near enough anything Jackman says in voiceover, and there's a lot of it, (laughs) could more or less be a complete episode of a TV series. Uh, there's some more quotidian criticism I could throw at it, like the sudden all-out gun battle that seems to have dropped in from a different film entirely, or the nicely reasoned from a world-building perspective, but entirely counterproductive switch of the traditional roles of day and night, meaning this is a very brightly lit noir, which is a complete total disaster. <laughs> and there's some less than stellar CG compositing and subsets that look particularly well like sets and so on and so forth but I think you get the picture that I'm not recommending this Um, I don't hate Reminiscence but I would steer you away from it Uh, watch Strange Days instead yeah uh, I I don't hate this either it's just I mean it was passable enough as I watched it but it even like basically from frame one uh, I had huge questions about the the films like obviously how does your world work your world doesn't work you think it works it doesn't you've not actually put any thought into this you've thought Mm. well what will happen the sea levels will go up and that will just mean all the buildings will stand and all the power cables that go underneath the buildings will still work it just Mm. means there'll be water at the front door instead no (laughs) (laughs) and yeah so that kind of put me off in the wrong foot from the get-go scott because it it doesn't work Uh, the idea of a place where a world where like climate change has not been reduced in its um, speed where things have you know flooded the stuff and particularly because it's set in Miami Mm -hmm. um, given that just in the last couple of months I've discovered just how badly seawater affects buildings in Miami yeah (laughs) <laughs> um, it was particularly poignant that let's say no like so you know, you've got all these buildings and they're just there and the whole film seems to consist of people being no more than a few meters away from the sea which is at the same height as them so has like have, has global warming stopped tides <laughs> did global warming yeah. reach as far as the moon and melt it is that what's happened here <laughs> uh, uh, and then strange but it's like the streets they're in are always wet uh, and apparently the sea's just behind those two steel doors over there 
yeah, don't open the door. That'd be very bad for us all. Yeah, um, <laughs> You'll let the sea in. At some point we see the, the rich people's um, area where they've apparently dammed the sea. No, mm. <laughs> it's the sea. No. <laughs> um, and like, it's in the United States. It's still a pretty big place. We did not just move further inland. Yeah. <laughs> they just abandoned the place. Yeah, uh, yeah so unfortunately... The, I kind of wanted to get into the world, but the world was so ill thought through that it didn't actually work for me. And mm. that kind of, as well as like just it looking so well, that the inversion you were talking about of the, the day and night thing, mm. it also didn't work though, because it was kind of suggest, I mean, they seem to forget when they're outside later that the heat doesn't actually apparently affect anybody, but yeah, um, sort of the way they're saying it, it would suggest that everything had to happen basically after nightfall. So people's, what would be nightlife now and their working um, day and stuff would all actually have to happen at night and it, it doesn't seem to work there so it's kind of it's all sort of half arsed mm, yeah which is a bit disappointing because there are some kind of interesting ideas in there but the the voiceover was driving me crazy it's trying to do a kind of noir detective style voiceover yeah but doesn't have the chops to do it doesn't have the right style or tone so it's all just kind of like a poor copy of that sort of film I mean, it's not, it's not all bad. I mean, I've seen films I've enjoyed considerably less. And, mm. and I mean, it's perhaps more frustrating. I think that there are, there are hints of some interesting things in there. It does feel a lot like a waste of potential. Uh, yeah. I think you could, I think you sh- they could have done more with just the whole kind of memory uh, diving, delving subplot thing as a mechanic of it, rather than doing that and doing the post-climate change and doing this, that and the other. There's the, the, it's trying to do an awful lot of things and it, because it can't spend enough time really explaining any of them particularly well, it winds up doing none of it well at all. Um, mm. that, that seems like a waste of potential. There, there's, there, that's why I'm saying. There's a number of good ideas in here. I think it would have made for a pretty good TV series. You could have spun this out and like focused on bits more and explained things a bit better and all that kind of stuff and maybe made the world make a bit more sense uh, by doing that. But yeah, in the well, it's not even a particularly long film. This isn't much over ninety minutes, if I remember rightly. It's maybe, what, maybe no, it's two hours. It's about two hours. Two hours. Um, yeah, th- th- there's just not enough time to do all that and actually make you care about a character. Uh, so yeah, it really needed it needed to be either a lot, lot longer or a lot more focused and shorter. Yeah, so, that's it. yeah. There's, there's too much in it, and also at the same time, not enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, your point about it being a minute or something, I can see that that might work and give that world more time to breathe. And yeah, hopefully they would, you know, have made the world make more sense because the world doesn't make sense. Hmm. And I mean, that ending, yeah, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it seemed to rush through a lot at the end, and particularly, and you know, bringing, bringing justice to characters that you've barely met and all this, like, okay, right, oh, fine, I don't really care. Yeah, and <laughs> then, a bit of a damn squib. Then for some reason, spend your life and the rest of your life in a bath. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and Manoir, again, if I start talking too much about it, I'll just completely take the whole thing apart. But it's, um, it's definitely one of those frustration type deals where like, like, there's something there. There's a, there's a seed of something interesting that I think they could have done more with. Um, yeah. But a bit more clever writing might have helped, actually, though, because that was a. Well, I, I mean, I was pretty much two to three steps ahead of the, of the characters all times. Yeah, um, that's not a good sign. Like when, mm-hmm. especially when it's something I was barely paying attention to. Yeah, <laughs> and I actually knew everything that was going to happen. Um, but then it's it's not even with that, that. Even with like it not being in any way complex, it's not trusting its audience with any intelligence either because it's basically spelling everything out. Yeah, you have Hugh Jackman watching this memory, and then there's an evening that's an important part, and then he goes, "Ah, you wanted me to find the evening." Like, yes, I know. Why are you saying this out loud? I've seen the same thing you've just seen. I understood what it meant. Uh, yeah, which is a pity. Uh, no, I'll just, uh, I, I will second your um, yeah, exhortation to watch Strange Days instead. But you yep. want to watch things about um, things in your head and memories. Yeah, Strange Days, much, much better film. Mm-hmm. Even with Tom Sizemore. That's how much of a better film it is. Yes, can overcome absolutely that handicap. There's, there's always one. <laughs> yeah. 